Hello and welcome to Scientific Supplement Reviews, the YouTube channel entirely dedicated to investigating the science behind nutritional supplements. In today's video, I will review NAD boosting supplements, which are most commonly taken as NAD precursors, such as NMN or NR. NAD plays an important role in many biological processes and is essential to human health and well-being. We know that NAD levels drop naturally as we age, and so the theory goes that by supplementing our body with NAD precursors, we may be able to reverse some of the physical decline and mental decline we experience as we get older. But does it really work? Let's see what the science says. NAD boosting supplements have been flooding the market in recent years, promising to boost energy levels, reduce fatigue and promote physical strength. In order to ascertain whether there is any scientific basis to the claims made by NAD supplement companies, I have conducted an extensive review of the published scientific and clinical literature. The body of scientific literature on NAD boosting supplements can essentially be divided into two parts. Firstly, there are those publications that cover trials in lab animals, mostly mice and rats. And then there are papers covering the human clinical studies that have been undertaken. Trials of NAD boosting supplements in lab animals have been very successful. Data published in highly prestigious journals have shown, amongst other things, that supplementing the mouse's diet with NAD results in an extended lifespan of the animal, reverses some of the damage done to the body by obesity and diabetes, and boosts the functions of mitochondria, the energy centers of our cells. I believe it is those phenomenal results in test animals that have fueled a lot of the initial enthusiasm for NAD boosting supplements. However, considering those hugely promising findings in mice, it came as somewhat of a surprise to me and others that so far in human trials these results have not been replicated. A large number of NAD supplementation trials have been conducted in humans. And for the sake of brevity, I will summarize the findings here. A more detailed video of me investigating the various studies can be found through the link in the description. Now, as summarized in this table, you can see that pretty much the only positive result that is being reported consistently across all the human NAD trials is that, following NAD supplementation, levels of NAD in the blood are elevated. Many prominent longevity enthusiasts have gone ahead and, based on that finding alone, have declared this supplement to be a success. However, they are mistaken, because while successful uptake into the body is of course a fundamental necessity for a supplement to work, that alone does not mean it is beneficial. You need it to also exert a beneficial function once it is in your system. And in this regard, unfortunately, NAD boosting supplements have so far disappointed in humans. There are a handful of studies that have shown a small improvement in some aspects of motor function but how significant these are in reality is questionable. Apart from that, on all other measures of age-related deficiencies, like physical strength, cognitive function, and energy levels, for example, there is no change observed in people who took NAD supplements compared to those who took a placebo. Now, you might be asking, what is the reason for this discrepancy between the very successful mouse trials of NAD boosters and the rather disappointing human trials? Well, we do not have an answer to this question yet, but I have an inkling as to what the answer may be, and it has to do with relative duration of supplementation in mouse versus human trials. In the longer version of this scientific supplement review, I outline my hypothesis in some detail and provide an explanation. Follow the link to that video in the description below. But for now, we have to attend to the important business of rating NAD boosting supplements on our traffic light evaluation system. And I got to find ammonium acetate. Now then, all things considered, is it worth giving NAD boosting supplements a try? Well, the human trials are clear. There is no real benefit to taking this supplement on a short to medium term basis. It may be that long term supplementation is required for this supplement to work in humans and we need the clinical trials to investigate this. However, I would wait for these extended trials to report their results before considering NAD boosting supplements, especially given the exorbitant cost of these products. In the meantime, it's a red light from me. 
So, this completes my brief scientific review of NAD boosting supplements. Please like and subscribe, and if you are interested in a more detailed review of the research studies behind these supplements, as well as a proposed explanation for the difference we see in mouse versus human studies, then please follow the link to that extended video down in the description. Finally, as always, let me know in the comments about any other supplements you would like me to review.